Kobesi here yet again. Today I'm going to be going over a really cool effect. It's kind of like a 3D effect that I kind of came up with on my own. Um, it's probably out there. There's a lot of different variations, but this is one way that I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and just start. So to begin, we are going to take the background layer and we actually just want to duplicate this. And to duplicate, you just press Command J. So I have my layer duplicated. I'm going to go from normal to screen. And as you can see, it just makes it a little brighter. But what you're going to want to do here is actually just move this a little, just shift it over just a tiny bit. And now what you're going to do is create a mask on this layer. The reason why we're doing this, this is because we want to erase parts that we don't want. Obviously, I'm not going to... I don't want to keep the picture like this, obviously. So you want to make a mask by pressing this little mask icon. And I do have a full tutorial on using masks, so check my previous videos if you want to learn more. And I'm going to go to my brush tool. Just a regular round brush, nothing special or fancy. Um, I'm going to invert this layer by going to Command I. So I basically just hid everything that I just did. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have control over what the effect, um, what parts of the photo will have this effect. Um, opacity is around 66%. I'm just going to lightly go over and I want to make sure my color is white, otherwise it won't show. So I'm just going over kind of the parts where I do want the effect to show up, kind of avoiding... The weird areas like that kind of makes her look weird, so I don't want to do that. And again, you can always change, um, you can always change the position of the 3D effect uh, photo right here by simply moving the photo. So let's say I did want to move the picture. All you have to do is just select this picture, make sure that this is selected. See how it's that's highlighted. All you gotta do is just move it around. So it just, you can always move it afterwards. You can shift it. You can shift it like that. Or I can shift it up if you want. But I'm going to keep it the way I had it. So that's just if you want to change it. Again, going back to my brush layer. I'm going to make this all fancy. Kind of going over. I don't want to go over like the entire area. And I don't want to go over this. It looks like she has two faces. <laughs> Get it, two faces. <laughs> Is that where they come up with that, the Photoshop? No, probably not. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of go over specific areas. And see how it's going a little, it's making that sharp edge. You don't want that. So I'm going to hire my opacity and just get rid of that. You don't want to go full opacity because you're not going to get the nice effect. It's not going to show very much. And it looks like she has like 20 fingers here, so got to make sure that I don't. Oh god, yes yeah, she does. I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is make another layer and simply put this on top again and set this one to lighten. And now it, sh it kind of looks like there's nothing happened. Um, lighten is actually another cool effect. And I'm just going to offset it to the top. Well, actually, let's see. Can't choose. You can kind of like eyeball what you want, but um, let's see. Again, I'm going to make a mask, invert it, and then go ahead and change my opacity onto 55 before doing that and kind of see what kind of full effect this gives me. And again, this is. Um, on top of the screen layer, so you're having you have two layers now. Look how fun! Look how much fun I'm having! Yay! Okay. There you go. I don't want to have it around her face area. That's just gonna make her look weird, like an alien, and I don't think Taylor would like that. Okay. So I kind of like how that looks. Again, just kind of whatever you, whatever kind of, however um, much effect you want, you can change and have it, um, you can have more layers of, so you can add another layer of screen and just move it around. It really just depends on what you want. 
but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have the screen layer and the light in layer. And now to just add on some nice color, I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then gradient map. And for this one, I'm going to choose a nice purple color, whatever it is. I think it's this one. Um, this is, a, I don't even know what color that, peri, not even periwinkle, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm pretty, not really that good at colors, but I think this one's like a dark periwinkle color. Um, I'm going to press OK, uh, hit reverse, which is nice because you can, then you can change the way the gradient goes. And I want it so that the lighter color covers a skin tone and the darker color fills in all the blacks. So that's why I chose this color. And I'm going to go on over to color. I'm going to see how nice that looks. That looks kind of nice. Again, just changed it over to color and just set it to opacity of 27. And that's really what it did. And sometimes I will add... Um, another layer and just set it to lighten which is what I'm doing now but I'm just testing this out because I didn't practice this tutorial and that looks kind of nice again very subtle I just made another layer I just duplicated it I'm sorry and set it to lighten at 7% and then now I'm gonna go to layer new adjustment layer and curves and curves I just like because kind of like solidifies everything I'm gonna I just did RGB and I'm going to blue. I just made two really simple points and I do this in a lot of my tutorials. Again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this, making it look all nice and fancy. Kind of cool. And I'm going to go to the red and make a tiny little red Literally, like, the most subtle, like, you probably need a microscope to see what I just did. Or I probably didn't even do anything, but oh well. Okay. I'm going to lower the opacity on that just a tiny bit. And last but not least, I'm going to go to selective color because, I don't know, that's just, like, my layer right there. I just love selective color. And literally, this is my process. I just slide back and forth and whatever looks nice. Like some some tutorials, some people who make tutorials will be like, oh, um, yeah, you have to set this mathematically at 12% and you have to make it. I'm like, no, I just, whatever looks good kind of is what I do. Again, just sliding back and forth. I really, personally for me, I like to use yellows, reds, and I use uh, reds, yellows, whites sometimes. Don't really use neutrals unless I'm going for a really crazy wild thing and then sometimes I use blacks But mostly I use reds and yellows because they control um, really um, General parts of the picture skin tones lips stuff like that. So Again, this is very subtle, but it does make a huge difference in the picture And as for whites one thing I like to do is take down the magenta because it creates it fills in the, the white areas with a really nice green color. So um, if you just slide these back and forth, you'll see that it creates some really cool effects. And again, did it practice? I usually practice my tutorials like once, but I don't sit there and, you know, calculate each thing. So you guys, that's the thing that's too methodical. So you guys can really see how I do this. Um, now that I'm finished with my selective color layer, and this is set to normal, again, only used reds, yellows, and whites, I'm going to use my last layer. I'm going to try out levels just to kind of make it a little bit darker. I'm just going to pull this middle one a little bit and bring this up. Well, I don't want this up too much because if you bring this up, it's going to take away from the white or the color that we just did, this nice sky, green sky, so I don't want that to be blown out. So, kind of like how it is now. Like that. And, I mean, I really could add a bunch of other stuff. Um, just really quickly, I made a new layer, and I'm going to select that green color that we just did set this entire layer to screen and kind of go over it 
these areas just a tiny bit. Actually, I'm going to set this to overlay. And my opacity is around 55% right now. Just slightly going over these areas, just because I want them to be, just want them to pop, obviously, because I have a nice effect going here. And again, this brush, a hardness is 5%, the size is 400. I'm just going over it with an overlay layer, really simple. Making one more for my little purple color. I love purple. I'm selecting the color. I'm just holding Alt and I'm selecting the color. And let me try screen first. Really light opacity. I don't want to do anything too crazy. Now I'm noticing that it's not really doing what I want. I can always change that. Just slightly going over. And making one more layer. I'm sorry, I go so fast. You guys can yell at me in the comments. I'm sorry. I, I have a really bad just impulse. I just do things right away. Um, I literally just made another new layer and set it to overlay. Same purple color. I'm still getting the hang of the fact that I'm, you know, doing um, video tutorials because I usually write my tutorials. I do written tutorials. I used to on my website anyways. When I was like 15, I made stuff, so I'm still getting the hang of this. So this is how it looks. Let me show you guys a before and after. This is before, and this is after. Let me just do another cl quick close-up. And again, this is was really simple. Didn't do anything super crazy. This stuff is so simple to do using basic adjustment layers. So I encourage you to go through... Um, kind of find out what layers you like to use, what kind of effects you like to do. Comment. I love taking requests and um, I love helping people with this stuff. So, you know, subscribe, comment, and send me an email if you would like a um, tutorial, if you would like a uh, me to do a request for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you like this. Thank you.